The Invicta, a traditional British wet fly, was uh, designed in the late 19th century by British angler James Ogden. The Invicta is still widely used today. It is a complex pattern that involves procedures such as palmering the hackle through the body, adding blue jay throat hackle, and a hen pheasant wing slip uh, for the wings. Materials to tie the Invicta. A hook, traditional wet fly hook. For this video, I'm using a size 10 2X heavy. Thread, brown 6.0 or 70 denier. Tail, golden pheasant crest. Body, the original body is yellow seal, fil seal fur. But I'm using a substitute called synthetic living fiber. The body hackle is a palmered brown rooster hackle. Ribbing is fine oval gold tinsel. The collar is two wraps of the rooster hackle and a throat of blue jay. And the wings, I'm using wing slips of pheasant wing quills. Okay, I'm going to start tying right behind the eye of the hook. Trim off the excess. And then I'll bring the thread to the bend of the hook. I could use open spirals just to get there quickly or touching wraps, but since this isn't a uh, tinsel body, I'm not worried much, uh, much about how the lumping or how it will show through. And the barb lines up with the bend of the hook. I'm going to take a golden pheasant crest feather and use that for the tail. I'm taking a golden pheasant crest feather. I'm measuring it to the shank of the hook. Since this is the tail, the tail for this fly is the length of the shank of the hook. I'm going to transfer it to the bend of the hook and using the uh, pinch and loop method I put the thread in between my thumb and index finger let it slide down and then I'll pull it up I will secure this at the bend of the hook now we could tug on it make sure it's the right length if it was uh, too long I'd pull it from here if it was too short I'd pull it here but this looks like it's pretty good I'm going to run the thread up towards the eye, at least halfway. I'm going to trim this off, this make it easy for me. And now I'm going to secure a oval, small oval golden tinsel to under the shank of the hook. You can either catch it or trap it or even use the pinch loop method. And then I'm going to run it right to the bend of the hook. I like to hold the tail to make sure it doesn't slide around. And now I will trim any excess. I'm going to add a little wax to my thread. Uh, since uh, what the uh, dubbing fur that I'm going to use is called a... Uh, SLF uh, synthetic living fiber uh, to replace the uh, yellow seal baby seal uh, and I find that that mate this material uh, is a little needs a little wax to uh, adhere to the thread so what I did was I cut up pulled apart made the fibers just a little smaller and then I'll just place a little at a time on the thread and dub or twist but everything has to be in one direction to make this dubbing dubbing noodle and you want to keep it uh, pretty uniform but very thin because if you make it too thin the body will look will not look very well and let me just add a little more and I'll get started with the uh, dubbing the body and always remember you can always add add a little more as you uh, go towards as you create your body so now I'll take my first wrap at the bend of the hook once again I like to hold the tail in place so that it doesn't twist 
and now I will start dubbing the body almost touching wraps and in some spots where I think it's bare I will go over it with another wrap but I'll just keep wrapping and if I need more I'll add more my hands already have a little wax on them so I will just put a little more wax on the thread and then I'll dub a little more sometimes you can uh, wet your fingers to help make the uh, dubbing loop tighter and just a little more and with this this material it's got a nice sparkle to it sheen to it so it's really nice for fishing so I stopped the uh, body the body is about uh, three quarters the length of the shank of the hook leaving one quarter bare still and I'm going to tie the uh, hackle which is going to get palmered through the body at the at the uh, spot where the dubbing is ended so I tie the hackle the shiny side facing towards the eye of the hook this is the dull side shiny side is always like um, when you buy the package the feather that's uh, the side that's showing out towards you so I just caught that right underneath secure that in place and I will cut the stem off and just put one more wrap in to hold that in place I have the hackle in the hackle pliers the hackle pliers hold the uh, hackle in place so that you can wind it around and you're probably saying well if I tie it here how am, where how does it get secured to the fly and that's going to end up at the bend of the hook and will be secured by the ribbing uh, material the gold uh, oval tinsel so the first two wraps will be right at as a collar one I like the, my collars on wet flies to be stroked back so there's two right there and now I'm going to palmer rib equal spacing through the body I'm hoping that trying to get four to five good wraps through the body here's one now that that seems like that's a little too too wide I'm gonna bring it back just a bit one two three and four and then right at the bend I lift it up I take the tinsel and I wrap put a wrap right at the bend of the hook release the hackle pliers and I'm going to take the the wire and I'm going to wiggle it between the hackle barbs and cross over the stem and these this these wraps will also be nice even spacing as you get towards the uh, the collar I like to get that out and put that right underneath the shank of the hook secure that with the bobbin the weight of the bobbin will lock it in place we'll do it three times and I will trim that off and I will put a couple more wraps in here just to make sure that it doesn't undo then I will to come back and trim that hackle off just 
making sure that everything stroke it back just a bit any of the fibers that were hackle fibers that were uh, trapped basically trying to untrap them and get that in place and I'll put another wrap to hold that in place I'm going to rotate the fly so I can tie the beard so at this point I'm going to take some blue jay going to measure it for the beard try not to get the points uh, to exceed way past the point of the hook so it looks like I just need that much I'm going to trim off this excess now that I trimmed it to size I'm going to lay it right behind the eye of the hook catching the butt sections of it and secure that in place and now I pull a little tight and it'll flare a little bit and now I have a beard and then put a couple of wraps in to really secure it in place and rotate the hook and move the camera back into position. Now I'm going to take some pheasant wing slips and when I take these uh, for the wing, the thickness of the slips need to be about the thickness of the gap of the hook. Now I'll take two uh, hen wing slips. These are hen pheasant uh, wing slip fi uh, fibers from the uh, wing. They are the thickness of the gap. Now I'll hold one into place on the far side. And I'll take the near side one, match the tips up, and hold that into place. Use the pinch loop method. Secure this tight. Don't let go. If you let go, you're going to twist them. Make sure that everything is secure. And the wing is now set. You can now still pull on the wing, shape it into place, marry it, still will marry to the far side. Then I will take my scissor, cut it at the angle of the eye, and I will create the head and then I will whip finish it and I'll do it one more time going from the eye to the wing, pull tight, take the razor, and trim. I will take some head cement on, on my bodkin, and just touch the threads, the thread head. And the fly is complete. You still could give a little pull on the beard. And we have a completed Invicta. Thank you for watching.